All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a video response of sorts to Charlie of the Charlie no Saikatsu channel. Or Saikatsu. I don't know. I'm not good at pronouncing stuff, so sorry if I butchered your name there, Charlie. My bad. But anyway, um, Charlie made a video recently talking about uh, one of the things that really annoys him being an American living out here in Japan. You know, being called Mr. Foreigner and stuff like that. So. Uh, I just thought I'd throw my own two cents into uh, the topic and just discuss one of the things that annoys me about living out here in Japan. Now keep in mind, I don't hate Japan, I don't hate the Japanese people, you know, I really love it out here, but, you know, <laughs> there are some things that do annoy me, especially, you know, living out here as a foreigner. So, um, I think the main thing that really annoys me is when Japanese people, you know, try to speak English to me. Now, let me put some context behind this because, you know, I think it's great that they're, you know, trying to speak English and stuff like that, but um, I kind of understand why they do it. It's just, it's just kind of annoying because, you know, for me, you know, I don't feel like a foreigner, you know, to me, hearing the word foreigner is like hearing about, you know, the foreign exchange student, you know, that weird kid from you know India or some other weird country with a lot of syllables that nobody's really heard about before you know that's what I think of when I hear the word foreigner I think of like Balky from uh, Perfect Strangers don't be ridiculous Andy don't be ridiculous cousin <laughs> watch the show it's great stuff anyway um but yeah I, I see myself less as a foreigner here and more just as a guest you know, and as a guest, I feel, you know, I should be polite and, you know, try not to, you know, shake things up, you know, just kind of, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, or in my case, when in Japan, do as the Japanese do. That's just my philosophy with things. So, my Japanese isn't really that good, but I really try my best, and I try to use phrases that I know, you know, a lot of you know, frequently used phrases, you know, where is this place? You know, or just pointing out to far away things, close things, you know, hey, what's this? You know, kore wa nan desu Stuff like that. <laughs> you know, just very basic phrases. And, it, you know, when I use those phrases and asking Japanese people stuff, sometimes, you know, they get a little flustered, like, oh god, this foreigner's speaking to me, uh, and then they try to remember like the four or five English phrases that they learned from English school or English class or whatever, and they're like, "I sorry, no, no English." And I'm like, ah, "But Nihongo no shabute de sho." You know, you know, I'm speaking Japanese, aren't I? Uh, so it's kind of frustrating when I'm I'm trying to be, you know, the polite guest, and you know they're trying to be almost over accommodating. But you know, it's. You know, they're Japanese, they're super polite, they're trying to accommodate me as much as I'm trying to accommodate them. And I guess we kind of clash in that way. So, uh, I, I was thinking of some of the reasons why Japanese would just, you know, all of a sudden not understand Japanese when talking to a foreigner and just switch to English mode. And one of the reasons is, you know, they might want to practice their English because Western foreigners, we're not talking like, Koreans or Chinese or anything like that, that are kind of a rarity out here in Japan, relatively speaking. You know, compared to the rest of the population, we're pretty low on the totem pole. And, you know, depending on where, where you go, we might be seen as like exotic unicorns or just like weird, some weird mythical beast that you don't really see all that often. Oh, look at that white foreigner with his blue eyes and his weird hair and stuff. You know, he's so majestic. The Majestic Foreigner. <laughs> or something like that. I know I'm kind of exaggerating a bit. Just a bit. But, um, you know what I'm saying. So, basically we're kind of seen as a rarity for the most part. Unless you go to like very foreign, foreigner-centric places like, you know, certain parts of Tokyo. You know, Shibuya. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, Roppongi. Or even out here in Yokosuka where it's a military town. And, you know, you got a lot of... American military members running around doing their thing, so you know, I don't really get the whole 
you know, exotic foreigner th uh, thing out here just because there's so many of us. It just kind of seems like, eh, you know, to me it's like, oh, there's a lot of Japanese people around here. <laughs> More than anything, I guess, it's just, it's kind of a melting pot of sorts in, in Yokosuka. So like I said, I don't really get the exotic foreigner vibe too much. I mostly get that when I go further out, you know. Not so much Tokyo because, again, foreigners out there, but, you know, just further out, you know, maybe like Shizuoka or something like that. But just as an example. Um, so another reason they may want to, you know, turn off the Japanese and turn on the English when speaking to a foreigner is, you know, because they want to practice their English because, you know, they don't really have, aside from English school, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities for, you know, Japanese people to practice their English and, you know, what better, what better, uh, way to practice their English than in real life, you know, when you can talk to a real life foreigner right in front of your face and you don't have to pay him. <laughs> so now keep in mind, I'm not an English teacher, so I'm sure English teachers have their own feelings on the subject. You know, they don't want to give out free lessons or do stuff like that. But you know, I'm not an English teacher. I'm not in the field, at least not at the time it's recording, maybe later, but right now I'm not. So I don't have any hangups about just talking to Japanese people in English just because, you know, I don't really have a, I don't really mind, but um, if I'm trying to get someplace, you know, like if, like if I hop in a taxi or something like that and they try, you know, talking to me only in English, you know, depending on how well their English is, some, some, some taxi driver's English is pretty good and I just kind of turn off the Japanese and turn on the English and just kind of explain where I want to go, but other times it's like, I talk to them in Japanese and it's like talking to another American in Japanese. They're like, I don't understand those weird noises coming out of your mouth. What are you saying? Is that, is that English? I don't, I don't know. And so they just end up looking at you funny. Now I know my Japanese isn't the best, but you know, you'd think that after a while they would kind of understand what I'm trying to say, or they might repeat something, you know, if, yeah, I wasn't clear about something that I might catch on. Oh, shit, I goofed up the pronunciation of that. Okay, I'll try it again. And, you know, they usually get it. That's just one of the things that kind of bothers me about living in Japan. Uh, at least for me, you know. Maybe it doesn't bother anybody else, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so keep in mind, still love Japan. Love the Japanese. All that japanese stuff. Love that shit. But, you know... Once you come out here and live here for a while, you kind of, you know, get out of the honeymoon phase and, you know, you start noticing these little uh, eccentricities, these uh, Japanisms, as I call them. And, you know, some are cool, some are kind of weird, and others are just kind of annoying. So, you know, you just roll with the punches, I guess. So, I think I've rambled on long enough for this video. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son. That's not it for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this rambly video response and for watching my other stuff. Also, gotta thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you boop, next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.